and the authorities having judged world conditions favourable for another laughter file, let me explain how these shows differ from that other lot, the ones that so grossly overuse the word cock-up. Both programmes are based in these air-conditioned slave quarters on the 10th floor, and they share this dedicated team of researchers you can see trying to look interested behind me. But occasionally, some of the clips they turn up for all right on the night can't be included because they're not really outtakes. But they're still either amusingly unusual or unusually amusing, hence laughter file. And during this latest version, we'll be stopping off at some of the other locations around the building that have contributed to our scar-studded assembly. But to kick off, Here's a batch of non-outtakes from a file labelled live or deliberately left in. The first one welcome a very funny man, always welcome here, the madness of Joe Pasquale. for you, but it's a career for me. Look at it. What were you doing with him? You're going to take him for a walk? I'm taking him for a take walk. Take him for a little walk? Well, I can't. He's proud. Look at it. Where is, am it I... is it all falling apart? Well, where am I going to stick this? He's not... Yeah, look at it. I don't look. know. You know you're penguin better than me. Not that well. Let us talk about shared interests. So, <laughs> does just... Steady. Ah. Well, I mean, football. Does Helen love football? Helen? live television for you. Uh, sorry, you've got to stop me there, my friend. Uh, because I'm afraid you can't do a poem this week because Sabrina's lawyers have, uh, where are we? Sabrina's lawyers have been back on again. You're joking us. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I can't, what can't I write about her this time? What part of my body? Just a couple of things. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like the sellotape still on it. All right, all right, just a couple of things. <laughs> Look at the head, see? <laughs> a couple of things, though. No, come on. Does, does, it, does it mention a chin? <laughs> Yes, it does, yes. Yes, it does. <laughs> does it mention our angles? Uh, hold on, I'll just check with you there. You thought you were still rehearsing? I did, yeah. <laughs> And here's where a homely British pud finally shocks America's Mr. Unshockable. And you now are going to taste yes. Spotted Dick. Are you ready for this moment? There it is. Do you want it with or without the custard? <laughs> Go with the custard. <laughs> we'll go with the custard. Now then, be a big brave boy, try it. Oh, God, it's like school dinners. I'm sure it's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> it is very school dinners, it really is. Filling for a cold day, Jerry dear. Go on, go on, one, this two, three. This is my first spotted dick. <laughs> <laughs> and it may well, well be his last. Hey, kids, ask Mom. <laughs> Mm. What a, I'm proud of you. Thank you for trying that. Oh, well, 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 I'm no, really proud. I'm suddenly like. feeling gay. <laughs> 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 All right. If you'd like yeah, a copy, no, let him, no, 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 make him oh. do it. No, let him, make him do it. Come. If you'd like a copy of this, get help. <laughs> Gets to look more and more like a dissolute Michael Grade. Well, some of the more agreeable recent additions to our laughter files came from Théâtre de la Rue, a prankish group of Parisian actors whose antics are staged on the streets of Paris, leaving their fellow citizens either vastly entertained or as in this first example, slightly bemused.
and here's the full company presenting passers-by with a Parisian wedding drama. In London, there'd be a queue forming behind him. Well, although horticultural programmes don't generally yield much in the way of herbs giggling, this next item made it into the file labelled Takes Ruined Before They Even Started because it features a West Country gardening expert named Dennis Cornish, for whom the task of describing what he was about to do with a small plant obviously recalled something deeply personal. Do it again then? From there. <coughs> there you are, lovely. Not a <laughs> Oh God! Terry Andre, I'll come in, come in quick. Oh God, I can't do that. <laughs> I'm going to wet myself for the <laughs> Right. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> right, here we go. I think we're ready. One guy get it out of the snow. We got get it out. Incapable of practicing any form of mirth control. Well, now this prop store is probably the most suitable place for showing you something unique. For discerning Americans, there's no more cherished television memory than a long-vanished daytime soap opera called Dark Shadows, a brooding gothic melodrama, all cliff tops and lightning flashes, mansions of mad aristocrats, deep purple dialogue and sudden splats of doomy music. It went out every afternoon between 1966 and 1971, and, and this was the remarkable thing, every one of its 1,225 half-hour episodes was transmitted live, which for the actors meant there could be only one guiding rule. Whatever happens, whether you bump into the scenery, trip over the furniture, or get struck by total amnesia, keep going. 
So as you watch our special dark shadow sampler, remember that rule. Bear in mind that this was exactly how every show went out. And in the opening clip, see if you can spot the wire. sober, I would never run away from anything, and you must believe that, Mrs. Johnson. <laughs> yes, I can. With this? Barnabas. You know what to do, Matt. Uh, 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 you know what to do, now, Julia. Go, no, please, hurry. Well, stay here, Dr. Hoffman. You do not touch Julia. Larry, you must tell me what you want. Well, I haven't got time for now. Where is Cyrus? He left earlier this evening. Well, I'm going to die here. Stop it, I'll call the police! What are you doing? You aligned yourself with the devil himself. Don't you ever talk to me away that way, that way again. <laughs> Something happened, didn't it? David told me that. Yes, yes, he did. <laughs> no, sir. Some people think that David ought to be put away for treatment. Do you, uh, collect weapons by any chance? No, I don't. Mr. Collins, are you quite sure Mrs. Stoddard will be down shortly? I'd like to see Mrs. Todd if she's here. Word is that each actor was allowed one mistake per day. Some of them apparently used up their allotment into February 2017. Well, the first commercial break will soon be with us, so with many of our more indiscreet laughter files waiting on its far side, let's polish off part one with some case histories from the file marked PPP, short for pranks, put-ons, and practical jokes. They know you're here, I mean, they appreciate you. lies beneath the ground that I'm standing on here. 45 acres of old stone mine in a terrible state of dereliction. And the residents here fear that the ground could collapse at any time. Thanks, 
Krista. We've got a lot of local news planned for News Channel 7's Weekend Report. Here's a look. We'll take you inside the state prison on Highway 231 in Bay County, where inmates are getting prepared for the outside world. You'll be surprised by what they're doing. Also, how will the new community outreach center in downtown Panama City benefit you? We'll check it out. And News Channel 7's Daryl Nail is headed to Wausau for the annual Possum Festival. There's no telling what we'll have for you tonight. These stories plus sports and weather coming up at 6. Hope to see you then. Is he in the background? You are so mean. She's done like six. Gosh! Seven, take two. Forty seven, take three. Welcome down here to not see you. Good to see you. It's from Whitley Bear, Dev. Yes. Civil servant. Yes. Yeah. What's your wife call you? have got a nickname for you. Uh, super sperm. <laughs> That's not on the bloody card. That... <laughs> we'll cut this bit, bollocks. <laughs> now. It's already been done. Poor guy. He's still sleeping. Uh, can you blame him? No. <laughs> Take a step back, Norm. Let me see the shot. This far? No, a little more. A little more. Looked like a big old liver to me. It just looked like a big old liver. Wait a second, darling. I, I think it's going to rain. I better get under my umbrella. What is an occluded front? Now, that's a term that you have heard me use many times in describing an approaching frontal system and some of the associated precipitation. And what I thought I would do is just take a small amount of time and kind of explain graphically to you what that is. I think we can do that best by taking a peek at this satellite view in front of space at guess when? That's right, 2.15 in the afternoon. Now, an occluded front is simply this. Notice we have a cold frontal system right here and a warm frontal system right here. What happens in a storm cell is the cold front moves faster than the warm front, the cold front catches up to the warm front and lifts it up, forming an occluded front. four-month-old domestic short hair. He's litter box trained, and he is just full of fun and energy. <laughs> okay. I am not! I'm Melanie Shoebrooks. Thanks for joining us on this Friday. Our Region 10 News top story tonight, 300 croc racks of croc, racks, racks, rocks of crack, a quarter pound of pot, cash, food stamps, and other drug paraphernalia. What do you think about the man who drank nearly three quarters of a bottle of whiskey and, and died? He's a lucky man. 
United has received the royal seal of approval from the Queen. In an amazing break from tradition, she autographed a football for the first time ever. And it wasn't just any old football. It was, of course, a Man United one, just like this. Which I appear to have left downstairs. My apologies. There's a bill that's not in the Reagan administration concerning the future safety of the nation's nuclear weapons facilities. Energy Secretary John Harrington, in a letter to President Reagan, told the president the proposed 1990 budget falls in $360 million short in providing funds to update the facilities. Chief of Staff Kenneth Duberstein, however, says the budget will more than cover the plans from Missouri, where puberty seems to set in quite late. But Americans can be equally eccentric when it comes to their wedding rituals. Not only was I told of one where the best man was the bride's ex-husband and the matron of honor was the groom's first wife, but the US wedding videographer who contributed to one of our previous laughter file outings has now sent us some further exhibits. Would you face your bride and repeat after me? I, Robin. I, Robin. Take you, Sharon. Take you, Sharon. To be my wife. To be my wife. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. From this day forward. From this day forward. <laughs> and thoughtfulness towards others. She's always thinking of herself before anyone else. <laughs> well, to Jeff and Kim, this is the serious part of the evening where we have to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with the both of you. There's one small detail about marriage that we have forgotten to share with you. And this seems to be the perfect time to share it. Um, there is a small group of us who, now that you're amongst us, we have to let you know about it. a rarity, a guest who doesn't like the camera. Uh, we're doing uh, interviews here in line, uh, uh, and uh, we want to know what wishes you had for the bride and groom and, and uh, how you're related to the bride and groom. The very best wishes for them for eternity. Ah, okay. Great. Uh, how, how do you know the bride and groom? I'm just a guest. Pardon me? A guest. You're a guest? But you're a guest of which? The bride or the groom? More or less both. More or less both? <laughs> the questioning went on about seven minutes. Then the groom joined in. Who did you come with? Just a guest. They asked me not to say. It's Alan Hammond. Alan Hammond. Alan Hammond. Before. I wonder if he does it at funerals. Anyway, 
Among the clips filed under the label, moments that cannot strictly be said to fall into the category of outtakes, but would still under normal circumstances never be shown to viewers, a title we're going to have to do something about, there's a subsection headed Remarks Confided to the Camera After a Take's Been Completed. It covers this kind of thing. It's time to tango. I bet my ass looks huge. <laughs> you know, Griffin, you just push that whole creative image so much that we forget. You forget? You forget? You forget that I graduated from college? <laughs> it's tart. It's tart. It's tart. It's tart. It's tart. It's tart. Wait, 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 wait. I, I don't think the audience fully understands. But, you know, but, but. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this pie is very, very tart. <laughs> and it looks good, but I don't know who made it, but they saved money on sugar. <laughs> and, and so you, you, you don't see me eating it. Do you? That's all I got to say. <laughs> I've told you I don't want him here. I have told you I do. Now, I'm not going to give in, Harold. No, 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 not this time. I'm sick to death of being bullied. I don't I make a perfectly reasonable, a perfectly reasonable it's Oh, fuck! Goodness sake! Walls, I'm sorry. And I'm sorry. Mmm. Mm-mm. Delicious. You can't get much fresher than that. <laughs> 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 As a pack animal, the llama play. Oh, God! <laughs> 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 That's it. I'm gonna work with a camel. Four. That's so the ball wouldn't move too far, so it wouldn't miss the camera shot. That was done for technical reasons. Let's do it again. Right. Do you come here often? This is my 97th visit. Get away. Yes. That's more time than I went up for my driving test. <laughs> yes, 97. They, they just don't seem to be able to find anybody who likes me. Oh, how sad. I... 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 I can't remember... No. The word of it. <laughs> oh, I know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> just keep running. Nobody will know it's at home. Paul Merton giving away one of television's best-kept secrets. Well, this being a game show studio, let's go to something in that line from our vintage file. It's the opening explanation of an early 60s game show whose very title demands something from viewers that would horrify today's television bosses. Welcome to Concentration. It's a brand new quiz show, a show which doesn't uh, require any particular skill or knowledge on the part of the contestants other than the ability to memorize or concentrate, or both. Now, on this board to my right, you can see numbers from 1 to 30 in the form of squares. Now, each square can be turned to reveal the name of a prize on the back. There are 15 prizes. Each one is duplicated. Uh, if contestant succeeds in matching two of the squares by simply calling out the numbers, then this contestant wins the prize which he has duplicated. And also, the squares are then turned to reveal part of a picture puzzle. The solution of the picture puzzle wins for the contestant who solves it the major prize in that particular game, and also he retains all the prizes which he has won up to solving the puzzle. Uh, there are booby traps, of course. If uh, a contestant matches two of the squares which are booby traps, 
Well then, uh, certain things happen which we'll explain to you later. Uh, the winner, as I explained, keeps all the prizes which he has won, in addition to the big prize, but the loser doesn't keep any of the prizes which he won, uh, but he does, however, win a consolation prize. At any stage during the game, the contestant may have a guess at the solution of the puzzle, and if he gets it, of course, he wins the big prize, but if he guesses wrongly, well, he loses all the prizes he has won up to that point. If he wants a clue, he can have one, but if he asks for a clue, he automatically loses the prize which he has won before, the last prize which he has won before asking for the clue. Everybody got that? Anyway, another commercial break is lying dead ahead, so with a reminder that if you stay on this channel, you won't be using up your remote control battery. Let's tie off part two with a demonstration of what a giant leap it's been from the calm, measured tones of that concentration to the emotional and intellectual challenges of today's game shows. It's something that everybody should do every day. Is he romantic? Yes. Very romantic? Yes. He's a sweetheart. Would you call him a real Don Juan? You bet, the real and the only. Is that right? <laughs> when you got it, just one point. All right. Huh. Name something you should do in moderation or you'll be sorry later. Lucy. Sex. <laughs> Who is your favorite classical composer? Karen? Um, I'll just say Elton John. I don't know. Elton I John. <laughs> John said your favorite classical composer is, is, uh, composer is Barry Manilow. <laughs> Barry Manilow. Something you might buy that could turn out to be phony. Yeah, a horse. Girls, what one thing is the city in which you were born best known for? Jacqueline, what's the city in which you were born best known for? Uh, city Hall. For what? City Hall. For the City Hall. <laughs> I guess every city might be known for a little of that. Lionel predicted you would say it's best known for prunes. <laughs> Where were you born, Jacqueline? Los Angeles. <laughs> Shaken, you're, you know, you're, oh, you're, you're shaking, I should say, of course, I do beg your pardon. You're, you're known really <coughs> for this old style rock and roll. Why? No, no, why I'm, I'm, I'm basic. No, no, I'm a, a 1980s act. Oh, yeah, of course, you're acting in the 1980s, but your, no, star, acting, your style no. is in the roots of rock and roll, isn't it? No, I'm not an actor. I said your act is in. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's not finish this with an argument. <laughs> 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 oh, goodness gracious. Oh, right. 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 Well, that was, feel that was, better for that. That was a wonderful Christmas present. Oh, Thank you very much know. indeed, Sophie. <laughs> Ruined the hairstyle. <laughs> Hello, Judy. Oh, wow. Hiya. 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 Hiya.
Huge win. <laughs> Even Fred's never done that. Yeah, absolutely. Fred's never done that. <laughs> we will see you later. Yeah, they have such events as green sack tossing, tractor racing, and the almighty stacking hay contest. And there's two new events this year. They are the milk chugging and the piss. <laughs> You have the option of either pursuing it yourself, going to Citizens Advice Bureau, going to an organisation like Holiday Witch, or indeed, as Brenda heads up here, Holiday Travel Watch. She what is said. your view, Brenda, on last minute holiday deals and unnamed accommodation? <laughs> oh! Hi, I'm Barbara. I'm John. And this is Santa. Santa Claus, Santa that Claus. is. Santa Claus. Okay, well, I figured since you were grabbing my butt, Santa, I knew you had a first name basis. It ain't me. <laughs> yes, you've seen it in magazines. You've read it in the newspapers. In fact, perhaps you've even seen the owner's picture. Ralph Williams, the owner of Bayshore Chrysler Plymouth, 345 El Camino Real in the city of San Bruno. You notice the big, bald-headed son of a bitch? The man that came to San Francisco to offer them more for the dollar they spend. The man that came to San Francisco to rape each and every citizen and the whole San Francisco Bay Area. You don't believe it? Listen to me. I don't lie. Take a <laughs> car like this. 1966 Ford, a Country Squire 9 pastor station wagon. Don't worry about the equipment. Imagine all the fun you can have in the back. And while you're doing it, imagine all the money that that bald-headed prick Ralph Williams is going to be making on the car he's talk, trying to <laughs> you out of. The lesson there being never let your ex-partner do your commercials. Now, within TV, there are still a few areas where the main participant can't ask the people behind the camera, could I please do that bit again? There's, there's boxing matches, horse races, childbirth videos, but for laughter file purposes, few are more rewarding than those live magazine shows where the presenter gets landed with this type of guest. One, two, oh. three. Ah. Just kidding. Ah. Let go, Jill. Let go of the unicycle. Good. 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 You're fine. You're fine. Ah. Good. All right. Good, good, good. 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 Ah. Okay, now, no. Jill. No. Now, Jill, just, just, just chill out. You're not in any position to give me a hard time, all right? All right? We're gonna go for a little jaunt on the unicycle, all right? No, we're not. No, we're not. Yeah. No, we're not. You're not in any position to argue, okay? No, you're right, I'm not. All right, all right there we go. Oh my God. Okay, where's the live camera I want to ride toward? It's right no, there. Don't go right anywhere. Okay, all right, we're going this way. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's out the wires. Oh, no, we're. No. Jill, Jill, relax. Put your arms out to the sides. Okay. Good. Smile. <laughs> Act professional, Jill. Okay. All right. All right. Squeeze tighter, Jill. Oh, that's oh, good, Jill. Good. All right. We're gonna do this with one leg now, Jill. One leg. One leg. I'm going to ride the unicycle with one leg. God. All right. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. No. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> and as Jill heads off to the nearest trauma center, let's turn our attention to American TV commercials. And as Laughter Files' contribution to the theory that the most diverting commercials are generally those you've never seen before, here's a few we found in the file-headed American Regional Advertising. Hi. I'm here because, well, I have a thing for young girls. My name is Susanna, and I think my fiancé's mother wants to marry him. I have two personalities, and my other personality has loose morals. I like to dress and act like a girl. I want to kill the man I love. You think you've got problems? Wait till you see the Austin Lyric Opera's new season. <laughs>
Star Tribune, the newspaper of the Two dollar now, three dollar, three now, three, two, five dollar bidding now, six dollar, six dollar, five dollar bidding now, six dollar, six dollar, now, ten dollar dear now, fifteen dollar dear now, fifteen, but about fifteen dollar dear now. I have forty five dollar in a fifty fifty minimum fifty dollar in a fifty five 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 minimum fifty five dollar in a six minimum sixty dollar in a six Missouri auction school. Call to find out when our next session begins. Sixty dollars. Oh look, a falling star. Love those commercials where you only find out what's being advertised in the last frame. But something else we've had tucked away in our American files is a series of ingenious sociological experiments. Now their purpose was to discover whether randomly chosen people could be persuaded to abandon certain of their deeply held scruples in return for money. And if so, how much? I'll show you a typical experiment. Excuse me, miss. Miss, could I talk to you just for a second? I'm having a problem with my car. I don't know if you can see. I lost a fan belt. And I've got to get to a meeting about 40 miles from here. And what I need is a piece of elastic type material that's warmed that'll actually grab that thing and, and do it. Uh, are you wearing a bra? I'd be willing to buy it from you for $10. Because that works. I'm done with my wife. I did it before. I just wrap it around there. <laughs> Can I buy your bra for ten dollars? Really? Are you wearing one? Yeah. I don't know if it's the right kind. Well, that's all right. Anything will do with that elastic material. Just kind of, you know, can you unsnap it? I'd give you twenty dollars. Let me go so I can. Well, it has to be warm. If I put the top up in the car, can you slip it off in there? I'd give you twenty dollars. Because I really need it, and it has to be like within thirty seconds of the time that it comes off. If I, otherwise, I'd just go in and buy one, and it just slips over. Are you really over. in need of it? I really am. It goes right on here. The thing is going. I'm forty miles away. I'm already late. I'll give you thirty dollars. Would you do it for thirty dollars? Just slip it off. I'll hold your camera, and you can slip it off right here. Could you? Could, could you? I'll give you forty dollars because it's going to be a fifty-dollar tow, and I'm going to have to take a cab. Here, would you do it for forty dollars? All right. Let me hold this. Just slip it off. Right over here is fine, because I've got to put it right on there. Yeah, can you, can you do that? I can do it. Excuse me. No, no, no. You want, you, you want to know how to do this, so if it ever happens to you, you just put it right around the flywheel. I'm going now. You're going? Yeah. All right, well, thank you. Do you have any pantyhose on, too? Because I can use those. Well, thank you for staying with us for what everyone must have gathered by now was laughter file number four. But bearing in mind that as with golf and sex, you always reckon you can do better next time, we are already, as that unconvincing bustle in the background indicates, filling up the files for number five. Meantime, we'll see ourselves out with one of those sting-in-the-tail moments that would win a place in anyone's laughter file. The Mafia, right? This guy owes him $50,000. And the Mafia boss said, if you don't get that money to us, you're gonna die. He said, but he ain't got the money. How can I get it? He said, get it. He said, by next week? He said, no, tomorrow. He said, well, he, he said, I can't get it. Please. I, I beg of you. Please give tomorrow. So he went home that night, sweating, biting the nails, wondering how he could get together $50,000. He went upstairs, his wife was asleep in bed. He woke her up and he said to her, honey, I'm in bad, bad trouble. 
I need the money. I'm so, so nervous that these people, they're going to kill me. And he looked on her hands and she had two rings, diamond rings, what he'd bought her previously. He said to her, give us them rings. Save my life. She said, no. These are sentimental value. He said, but my life is in danger. I must have the rings. She said, no, you're not getting them. That is it. I don't care about you. They, they can go and kill you. So that night, he suffocated his wife with a pillow. And he was trying to get the rings off the finger. <laughs> Panic. Right? Couldn't get them off, so he cut the fingers off. It's like that. Took the rings to a dealer, got fifty thousand dollars for them, paid the mafia back. Twenty years later, he's made a big time again, a big comeback. And he's there in his big mansion. He's got everything: Rolls Royces, women, everything. What that man wants. A knock comes on his door. His wife. His wife. Hang on. The wind is blowing. The wind. Thunder. I'll do the sound of it. Right? So, he opens the door and there's an old lady with a blanket round her and she's shivering. He says, come in out the rain. Don't stand there, come in. Let me make you a drink. Do you want some, do you want some alcohol? She said, no, I don't touch the stuff. She said, well, would you like some coffee? She says, yes, please, that'd be very nice of you. So he made her a coffee and sat her by the fire. And as he gave her the coffee, he noticed the two fingers missing up the hand. No, seriously, listen. Yeah. So, all the time he's thinking, how can I? She looks sim She looks familiar. Did I get shot of the body? And he looks enough courage up and he says to her, if you don't mind me asking you, he said to her, what happened to your two fingers? And she said, No! Good evening. I was just sucking down a coffee bun and didn't time it awfully well. Some of it is still stuck to the roof of my mouth, and uh, I'm sorry. What else can I say?